Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling. In this session of the video, we're going to talk about the inguinal canal. So the inguinal canal is actually a short passage that extends inferiorly and medially through the inferior part of the abdominal wall. So this is the abdomen, this is the inferior part of the abdominal wall. So it's actually a passage through which different structures pass. We're going to talk about in just a bit about that. So medially through the uh, it passes uh, it ex extend inferiorly and medially through the inferior part of the abdominal wall. So it's actually and it is superior and medial to inguinal ligament. If you go medially, you see that there's a down there we have got the inguinal ligament. This is structure is the inguinal ligament, and, and this is uh, so the uh, so the. Uh, so this inguinal canal is superior to the uh, or you can say superior and parallel to the inguinal ligament and it's also the common site of herniation we'll be going to talk about that herniation in just the end because and the herniation uh, we'll be discussing about two types of herniation the direct and indirect so let's so now now let's talk about the uh, boundaries of the inguinal canal because we have, we are now done with the concept. The inguinal canal is actually just a passage through which uh, uh, mainly you know can you can say testes in uh, males actually pass. Uh, we will we'll be going to talk about that in just a bit. First, talk about the boundaries and the uh, after the boundaries we're going to talk about the openings and after the openings we're going to talk about the contents and finally clinical four things we'll be going to discuss. So in the boundaries we have got four boundaries we have got anterior wall we have got posterior wall we have got floor the downside and we have got the roof. So starting from the roof roof means uh, as we go above you know, towards the uh, main abdominal wall. So the uh, you can say the roof actually is actually formed by. Uh, three main things, three main structures. We have got in, in the roof structure, which roof means above. So in the roof structure, uh, we have got the transversalis fascia. We have got internal oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle. And the final structure that we have in the roof is the transversus abdominis transversus abdominus muscle also forms the roof so that if somebody is asking to ask you what is uh, the what are the boundaries of the uh, of the inguinal canal you will say four boundaries of the uh, inguinal canal that's the anterior wall posterior wall roof and floor the roof is formed by three structures that is the transversal fa transversus fascia oblique uh, internal in internal oblique muscle and the uh, trans versus abdominus and now let's talk about uh, the floor so floor is actually formed by you can see the structure below uh, below the inguinal canal that main structure is the inguinal ligament so which is actually uh, it, as you go medially we have got another ligament which is the lacunal ligament so the inguinal ligament is actually thickened over here so that's why we go there is a lacunal ligament so on the floor we have got two main ligaments on the most medial side we have got the lacunal ligament but normally on the floor side we have got inguinal ligament all across from the end to the till the start uh, from the start till the end of the inguinal canal now let's talk about the anterior wall and the posterior wall. Anterior wall means uh, on the above side, anterior side, and the posterior wall on the posterior side. So the anterior wall and the anterior wall, we've got the structures. We've got the actually aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. External oblique muscle. So the anterior wall of the external oblique muscle actually forms the anterior wall of the, of the anterior wall of the inguinal canal. So uh, you would rather say that anterior abdominal wall is actually formed by uh, aponeurosis of the external oblique, which is actually reinforced by the internal oblique muscle laterally. All right. So you would say uh, laterally, it is actually uh, reinforced by the internal oblique muscle. Now let's talk about the posterior wall. So the posterior wall is only formed by one structure, that is the transversalis. Marcellus fascia. So these are the simple boundaries of the inguinal canal. Very easy to remember. Posterior wall got only one, and anterior wall also got only one. And the floor, in the main concept, we have got only one. But in the roof, we have got three structure. That is the transversus fascia, internal oblique muscles, and the transversus abdominis. Now let's talk about the openings. So in the concept of opening, we actually got two main openings. That is one over here. There's a one known opening which we call the deep opening or the internal opening. So this opening is called deep or internal opening, and this is this one. This opening is called superficial, or you can say external opening, right? So now let's talk. About, there are only two openings: the deep one and the superficial one. So the deep one is actually found above the midpoint 
of the inguinal ligament. So there's a midpoint of the inguinal ligament, above the midpoint of the inguinal ligament. We got the start of that ring, so we got that deep opening. So this actually, this ring is actually, you know, formed or you can say it's situated by the transversalis fascia. So this is formed by the transversalis fascia, but the superficial opening or you can say the external ring is actually marks the end of the inguinal canal because this over here, uh, this actually ends. So it which lies, you can say we have got the pubic tubercle over here. I haven't shown it clearly, but there's a pubic tubercle. So it ends in the pubic tubercle. And it's also, it's, and one thing more uh, regarding the uh, superficial, uh, you know, uh, opening or you can say external ring that it is actually a triangular in shape. You know, when you see it closely, it's kind of a triangular shape in opening. So it's a triangular shape opening and it's actually formed by the aversion of external oblique muscle. This one opened by, you know, sected by transversus fascia and this is formed by the aversion of the external oblique muscle. That's it regarding the oh, regarding the openings or you can say rings on the inguinal ligament. Now let's talk about the contents. So in the re in the case of contents, we have got uh, four main contents. Uh, you know, uh, especially uh, you know uh, one for the man that is the spermatic cord. So uh, I'll be just naming them. So we in the content region we have got the spermatic cord. We've got round ligament in females, spermatic, spermatic cord in males, and ilioinguinal nerves, both in female and male, and we've got genital branch of the genio, geniofemoral nerve. So, four contents in the inguinal canal. Number one is the inguinal, ca <coughs> inguinal canal, it's uh, in, in the spermatic cord. Number two is round ligament in females, uh, you know, ilioinguinal nerve, and gen genital branch of genitofemoral nerve. So spermatic cord, you know, in it's found in males. It passes through this one. So it's actually, uh, you know, we refer, you know, what you refer is spermatic cord. So you know, we refer, or you can say, spermatic cord is refers to a collection of vessels, nerves, and ducts that run to and from testes. You know, they run towards testes. So all the nerves collection, their collection, and their vessel collection together, we call them spermatic cord. So these spermatic cord, you know, the spermatic cord is actually surrounded by the fascia, forming a cord-like structure. That's why we're call, calling it the spermatic uh, cord. But the round ligament in females, it's only in females. We don't got, we haven't got the spermatic cord in in males. And the ilioinguinal nerves, you know, so ilioinguinal nerve is actually something that has only sensory innervation of the genital, uh, genitalia. So it actually only travels through the part of the inguinal canal, not through the whole canal. So it exits from the superficial inguinal over here, it exits over here. So it's a it start between somewhere here and ends over here. So this nerve is actually uh, most at risk, you know, damage during the inguinal hernia. So because it passes through the inguinal canal. So whenever we have an inguinal hernia, whenever any structure passes through the inguinal canal, you know, causing hernia, so it's going to affect this nerve. So if somebody is asking your most common nerve injured during the uh, herniation of inguinal canal, your answer would be the ilioinguinal nerve. And the last nerve, we have got another nerve which is called the genital branch of the genital female nerve. That's it regarding the contents that are present, you know, four contents, I've talked about them, four contents present in the uh, inguinal canal.